Good morning, all. My name is Casper uh, Houghton. Uh, Dr. Alan Martin uh, sends his apologies for not being able to be here this morning with you all. Uh, the paper that you have there in front of you, the ABCs and Ds of Young Adult Relationships, um, has four main points that I would briefly discuss today, but really what I want to do is share my personal experience with sharing, um, with, with doing this, uh, this model. What is presented in this paper is uh, the result of many years of Dr. Martin's uh, research and, and practical uh, experience. Uh, and I've only joined this journey in the last year and a half or so. Um, for me, moving from the classroom, learning about this in books, learn, seeing it in a paper form, in theory, to actual practice, um, I found that this is not so much a model for ministry as a, a, a steps to do and things to implement, as it is more a worldview, a perspective that fuels your models for ministry that gives you the motivation, showing authenticity, fostering belonging, uh, creating opportunities for compassionate service, and also the most important thing, the discipleship aspect. Uh, those are the, the key components that I had a privilege of actually putting into practice this past summer at the General Conference. Uh, Dr. Alan Martin asked me to, to be one of the leaders uh, producing the Impact Atlanta uh, Young Adult in leadership intensive training there. And for two weeks, we got together with, with people from all around the world, young adults from every single continent, pretty much, came and we combined leadership training with community service and we made sure to provide a very safe social atmosphere for them to get together and just bond and also a safe worship environment for them to come in together and worship God and just to come into his presence. And I see that many of you were here were there as well. Um, so for me, as a leader in that, being authentic meant realizing and being open that I didn't always have the answers. I'm a peer just like the rest of the people there. We were pretty much the same age. I was in a leadership role. And it meant for me to realize that I needed the help of everyone else around me and to be very vocal about that and to accept ideas, to admit where I had shortcomings, where I needed help. And it was a very real thing to be implementing that. Fostering belonging meant quickly recognizing the gifts of those around me as I met people, uh, cr creating roles for them to be a part of, of the, the, the ministry that we were doing there, supporting them with money, with time, my time, with ideas for them to go and run with, or supporting their ideas, uh, in affirmation, networking them with other people, creating a sense of community um, in our shared interests. It meant listening to ideas. It meant resourcing. It meant publicizing the fact that they were as leaders as much as I was. Uh, it meant waking up early to turn on the lights and the sound system. And it also meant staying up way past when I should have been awake, hanging out, just talking, living life together and eating good food, <laughs> having good coffee, thanks to certain people here. Um, showing compassion follows right after that. It starts with the service, my service, getting up early, <laughs> being there for people, fostering that attitude, and it's amazing how that attitude moves to people around you. I had a, the drummer in the band that was, the worship band that was there, didn't want to go on the service opportunity, the community service project in the neighborhood. And I just encouraged him. Because he's a close buddy of mine, I don't know if he saw something in me. He went. After that time he went, he encouraged everybody else to go. It's a snowball effect. Um, and through it all, I saw the process of discipleship unfold. It's something that I really can't explain. I, I had a core group of leaders in the beginning. Worship leaders, people for you know, decorating, certain key roles that had to be filled for such a, a large event. And I would encourage them to get people under them and to encourage, for them to encourage their leaders under them and to keep the snowball effect. And it just started to replicate. The Holy Spirit, God was at work. I don't know what was happening, but with the perspective, with the worldview, with the, with the motivation of authenticity, belonging, compassionate service, and discipleship, the community began to form there. 
our numbers began to multiply. We started with 30 people, around 30 delegates, who had officially signed up to be there in, on the first day. Uh, by the end of the two weeks, we were over 100 people actively involved, volunteering, rolling up their sleeves, setting up, doing music, reading scriptures, having, having games together at night. I, don't, I didn't know half the people there towards the end. The friends had invited friends, had invited friends, had invited friends. It was none of our doing what happened uh, there in Atlanta. It, um, even though I couldn't, tell, I couldn't tell you the names of all the people in our final group picture, I know that they were a part. I know that they felt that they were a part, a vital part, because of the interactions I saw between uh, everyone there. Um, I just want to close with a story. Uh, that just embodies this whole idea of authenticity, of fostering belonging, of compassionate service, and of discipleship. Uh, I'm an audio tech, and there's a certain way that you're supposed to wrap up cables. And we had about 100 cables to wrap up the last night that we were there. Uh, and, and you can't just wrap it around your arm. Pastors, please be aware you can't just wrap it around your arm. And you can't just scrunch it up in a, in a bundle and, and throw it in the box. So we had a mess of tangled cables and wires, and I was just going to take me and another buddy of mine who was there who I knew knew what to do, and I was thinking too many cooks in the kitchen will just make this a long night's worth of work. We had spent about 14 hours setting up, and I just wanted to get it done and over with. So I sent everybody out, and I was there doing the over-under technique. Over-under, over-under, 100 cables to untangle and wrap up. Uh, a couple people came in and said, can we help? So I put them to work putting up chairs and staging, things other than the cables. And then finally, it clicked in my mind. If I'm going to live this out, I'm going to need to teach someone how to do this and, and watch them teach someone else how to do this. Something as simple as wrapping cables. So I showed the person how to do the over-under technique. Simple application of this, this idea. She started, started showing someone else how to wrap the cables. They started showing other people how to wrap the cables. I'm, the, I'm there in the corner, untangling a mess of cables, watching this process unfold in front of me. I had to be authentic in the fact that I needed help, bring people into my circle, serve them by showing them. I had to take time out of my schedule to show them how to do it and then watch them do it with other people and make sure they did it right. And then the process just kept going. By the end of, 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 of that whole night, we had, I don't know, probably 10, 15 people there wrapping cables along with me, singing worship songs. It turned into a praise service. It, I, can't ex I, it was, it, I walked away from that night. We, we wrapped up in about two hours, a job that I estimated taking me through the night. Um, we have video of they, they wrote a song that night they, so, much, so many things happened that night community happened that night because of the idea of being authentic fostering belonging showing compassion and creating a discipleship based ministry